two deadly collisions involving U.S. Navy destroyers in June and August 2017 may have cost the lives of up to 16 sailors, leading the Navy to declare a day-long operational pause to reflect upon its safety culture. That such similar accidents took place in such close proximity reflects stresses and failings common to the maritime fighting branch. In the 1960s, the Navy also suffered a series of deadly accidents aboard its carriers. In their wake came major reforms addressing the inherent dangers of operating ships packed full of explosive munitions, fuel and jet planes. This three-part series will examine why each of the accidents occurred, how the crew responded and the lessons that were drawn from the tragedies. The USS Forrestal was the United States' first supercarrier, and the largest ever built when it was commissioned in 1955. Capable of launching larger, more powerful F-4 Phantom fighters on its 1,000-foot long flight deck using steam catapults, the Forrestal was deployed to Yankee Station in the Gulf of Tonkin in July 1967 to contribute its carrier Air Wing 17 to the intense bombing campaign over Vietnam. Just nine months earlier, the smaller USS Orris Kenny experienced a devastating fire that killed 44 sailors and pilots all caused by a mishandled flare which triggered rockets stored in an ammunition locker. Misfiring rockets would also prove the bane of the Forrestal, but faulty bombs were more deeply implicated in the tragedy. The Navy was flying hundreds of missions every day over Vietnam, with its A-4 Skyhawk attack jets typically carrying 1,000-pound bomb under each wing. In just four days of combat operations, the Forrestal's air wing flew 150 missions, many targeting the Than Ho Railroad Bridge in North Vietnam. That operational tempo depleted the munitions stocks at an extraordinary rate, so old M65 bombs were dispatched to fill the gap. Everyone who laid eyes on the antiquated M65A1 bombs knew they were trouble when they were taken aboard on July 28. The Korean War vintage munitions had been improperly stowed in humid conditions for more than a decade, and were leaking liquid paraffin from the seams and coated in rust and grime due to their age. Ordnance technicians were afraid to handle them. The short, Stubby bombs were armed with unstable composition B in a thin metal casing, while newer Mark 83 bombs used the more stable composition H6 in a thick casing. A Mark 83 bomb could endure 8 to 10 minutes in a raging fire before cooking off, as demonstrated in Navy instructional videos, giving firefighting crews enough time to respond. To their credit, several officers did their best to prevent the weapons from being used. The ordnance chief at Subic Bay in the Philippines insisted that the weapons should have been destroyed, not employed, and only released them after making strenuous objections. Upon being loaded on the Forrestal, the carrier's ordnance chiefs expressed their concern to Captain John Belling. Belling agreed and requested different munitions from the ammunition ship Diamond Head, but was informed that none were available. Feeling he had no choice, Bling made sure the bombs were stored on the flight deck rather in the ship's magazine as a safety precaution.